I can't believe this guy's 35 years old already. I mean, he doesn't look it. I mean, he's still razor thin like he was coming out of Michigan after a year, like a skinny rook. Still not afraid to take a big shot. Makes a lot of them. But, man, he's 35. We're getting old. Jamal Crawford, two-time Sixth Man of the Year winner, and he's with us here on Tiki and Tierney. What's happening, J.C.? How you doing? Good, man. Where you been, buddy? You been hiding on us? What's going on? <laughs> I know, hiding in L.A., right? I'm trying to trying to stay low-key out this place. How are you 35? Seriously. I mean, it, I, I don't know. It, I wow. I'm 21. Do you feel 35? No, not at all. Nice. Not at all. It's just, I, I'm, I'm always in shape. I'm always playing basketball year-round. You know, so for me, it's easy. I just kind of keep flowing. It's not like I take time off and then try to get back into it, and that's when I think it's tougher on your body and you see injuries start to happen. I'm always locked in, so it's easy just to get back to the season. No, I hear you. And I made the analogy a long time ago. Um, Yogi Berra, I'm not sure if you're a big baseball fan. Yogi Berra, who, who passed away recently, was always yeah. thought to be a, one of the best bad ball hitters in the history of baseball. And I've always looked at you as one of the great bad shot makers in the history of baseball. So many times you put something up. And I've obviously seen it with the Knicks. I'm kind of used to it. You know, so, and it's part of your game. But you are not you are not a conventional player. You take shots that, that very few other people can make. I mean, you got a very unique game, Jamal. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, it's weird because, for me, it's not like um, I'm, I'm taking shots in the game that I've never taken, you know, in practice or just playing, you know, shots I don't work on. It, mm-hmm. It's just a comfortable thing for me. So I can understand, you know, I test the fan or somebody saying that's a tough shot. And it really is a tough shot, but – you know, I've I've had a knack for kind of knocking those down and practicing those. So for me, I get myself in position where it's not as tough as it looks. So I'm pretty comfortable taking those shots. You know, Jamal, I think I saw you last. You guys were staying at the Four Seasons, I believe, and you were at a restaurant behind it. I can't remember what restaurant it was, but I ran into you. And I remember asking you, like, the secret to your longevity has been, one, you've, you've stayed healthy, as BT was talking about, but two, you've embraced a role that some people would say, that's not my role, I want to be the man. But you've embraced being the sixth man. You've been sixth man of the year a couple of times. I mean, that's hard to do for some guys. Yeah, it is. It really is. But for me, at that point in my career, uh, I was averaging 20 points, but I'd never been to the playoffs, and I didn't want to be known as a guy who was just a great scorer on bad teams. Mm-hmm. You know, So I ended up getting traded to Atlanta, and at that time, they had their starting five in place for like three or four years. They'd been to the playoffs a couple of times. And I said, you know what, I don't care. I'll, I'll still have an effect. I'll come off the bench, no problem. You know, I think it's a weapon when you can have a guy who averages 20 points come off your bench. You know, If you look at all the championship contenders, uh, in the past with San Antonio, they've always had Ginobili come off the bench. Or, you know, with OKC, they had Harden come off the bench. You kind of need that guy that uh, doesn't have the ego is really thinking about the team. And, and, you know, when the starters come out, the stars come out, there's not a big drop-off because you have this guy who comes off the bench. Mm-hmm. Right? It's mostly second units, and I think it kind of keeps the starters fresh, uh, keeps them better towards the end of the games, and I think it gives your team a huge lift. I'm talking to Jamal Crawford, two-time sixth man of the year winner with the Clippers, and, boy, they got a lot going for him. And, you guys had an interesting offseason. It looked like you lost DeAndre Jordan. Then you got him back. And then Lance Stevenson showed up. And Tiki and I were hitting this early in the show, Jamal. I mean, I think that Stevenson is an incredibly gifted player. He's strong. He can defend multiple spots. He can pass. But he's also kind of been a little bit of a loose cat. And how's he fit in so far with the team? You know what? He's been great. It's weird because from afar, you know, I didn't know him besides just playing against him a couple times a year. And that was pretty much it. And, you, you know, you like you said, you hear things, you, you kind of see things. But getting him in the locker room, he's actually it's been a pleasant surprise. He's really a fun-loving guy. He's young. You forget how young he is. Yeah. You know, he's always joking. He's always having a good time. And on the court, he's competitive. He really is. He's not backing down from anybody. I think he brings the toughness to our team, even though, like I said, he is young. He's been in the, the playoffs before. He knows what it's like. He was almost an all-star a couple years ago. I think being in this structure and in this culture, you know, having good vets around him will definitely help him out and help his career blossom. We've been, you know, pleasantly surprised, Lance, I could say as players, because we didn't know much about him besides the stuff you, you read, you know. But having him in the locker room, he's a funny guy, and he's, fit, he's fitting in great.